take us through your decision to come to Minnesota, what, what led to it, and how, how the process was? Yeah, I'll just say the, the transfer portal is a, uh, it's a wild new world. Um, I was kind of warned going into the portal about how kind of crazy it gets, and I, didn't, I don't think that I really understood the true depth of it until I got in. Um, you know, I was lucky enough that I had some schools reach out pretty early when I got in the portal. I didn't really know what to expect when I got in, and Minnesota was one of the first schools to do that. Um, you know, once I saw that kind of, you know, Minnesota come in, I was like, I might as well check it out. And I heard a lot about the program, a lot about Coach Fleck and the culture. Um, and that's kind of, the, you know, the player that I am. I, I take value, value in, in culture and the team. And so when I got here, I fell in love with the process and, and the culture and the team. So um, I think I took off and ran with it. I, I can't thank the, the staff and the, and the team much for, for, for taking me in that fast. Was there another school that uh, you were really close on as far as making your decision and, and what, what was the biggest thing in coming here for you? Um, I think there's, you know, there's a handful of schools that you kind of have to sort through. Um, that's how the portal is for a lot of people. Sometimes you kind of got to figure out who actually wants it and who doesn't. Um, one of the things that I had, you know, taken um, a, lo a lot of weight to was, you know, you, you want to go to a school that, that wants you the same thing, the, the same way that you want to go to that program as well. Um, and, and Coach Fleck mentioned earlier that, you know, we aligned um, pretty well pretty quickly. Um, and that that had a lot of weight for me. Um, and, you know, I'm, I wanted to get in and out of the portal as, as quickly as I could, um, you know, as long as I was going to the school that, that fit me the best. So uh, Minnesota ended up being that school for me. Darius. You look at the lack of consistent passing game success the school's had the last few years. What was the <clears throat> vision that Harbo sold you on that you can help elevate this offense to one that, is even league average. Yeah, I, I think it's the it's the challenge that excites me and and Coach Harbo and the, and the team. Um, you know, you you could always you could easily walk into a school that has you know the best passing attack in the country, um, and you have these high expectations placed upon you as you get there. Um, and, and coming into a, a school where you know there a, a new challenge that's set forth um, is super super exciting. Um, and the ability to you know for the coaches to to open up their arms and open up their um, you know as Coach Harbo and I work together for you know our new um, ideas and stuff. I, I think it's really cool. It's it's what you know uh, gravitated me towards here to Minnesota. Um, you know, and, and seeing what this team had to offer. I think this this team is is so skillful and talented. Um, and I don't think that any quarterback could turn that down, especially in the portal. It's it's a again a wild world. Um, and, and finding that school um, that fits you best is is uh, is a hard thing to do. Darius, everything was pretty fresh last year being a freshman, but having gone through it all, how did that help prepare you this offseason, and what are you looking forward to heading into the spring? Um, I feel like it gave me some insight on what I need to do in the offseason, uh, what I need to do to like prepare myself uh, mentally and my body. Um, obviously, what I went through last season um, was unfortunate, but it's just I knew what I needed to go into the offseason like, thinking about and like – Working on myself, um, I had to better myself, like getting in the training room, um, stretching, make sure I'm laddered up in every warm up. Um, before I get out, get out and practice, making sure like I'm warming up in the training room before I do the warm up. So everything has been like body focused for me, and then obviously mentally, figuring everything out and all the things that we're working on, making sure that I'm on top of my things. Darius, when you first Great. stepped out on the field, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make as you all moved up in speed level? Um, I'd say it's it's the mental part of it. Um, everybody does their job. Like the defense is where they're supposed to be at all times for the most part. So um, making guys miss in those in those tight spaces, um, like there's really never really a wide open gap. Obviously there is here and there, but that was the biggest adjustment. Like everybody's where they're supposed to be. What's your uh, kind of initial first impressions of, of Max? Uh, yeah, Max. The one word I'll describe him as is uh, general. He um, he takes over the offense. He, he you know constructs the offense. You know he brings in his own little flair to it. It's something that we've never seen before. And uh, like if I had to you know sum it up in one word, I'd say general. Daniel, how does that happen so quickly? Like when he comes in? Um, just I'd say the team embracing him and like him also kind of sticking out. You know, you can see from him from day one, it's a big difference. And uh, really just the trust and the, you know, com commitment to, like, us teammates that he's already given us, like, since day one is kind of, like, what, it, you know, allows him to have that, you know, so so easily. Max, you were able to work with some of the alumni for their pro day. And then you, we had, it was mentioned you brought some guys down to Atlanta or Georgia to mm -hmm. work out. What have you seen from uh, – 
the workouts that you've had and what has impressed you with some of the alums or the guys you'll be playing with next year? Yeah, the, the pro day was, was really fun. Um, you know, we had a couple of days to work together and um, kind of get to know each other within like 48 hours. Um, so that was pretty cool. I think the, the, the cool part about, you know, the new receiver room and the new tight end room is um, everyone is, is there. There's a crave and a desire to, to grow and to, and to kind of progress. Um, it's just, it's hard to find. It's kind of the intangibles that was talked about earlier by Coach Fleck. Um, you can't teach that. And so when you have a receiver room and a tight end room and a running back room where everyone wants to grow and there, there's a desire there, it's, it's just, it's an exciting thing to be a part of. Um, there's not a, a forceful like, hey, we got to do this, we got to do this. It's like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Let's do it right away. Um, and it's kind of cool bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, that's the best part of, about playing football is being a part of the team. Um, and when you get a, a good team that, that, that wants to grow and, and wants to, to play together, there's nothing better. Yeah, Max, on that topic, you got to pick the brain a bit of, of Josh McCown after the pro day happened. Just what did you learn from him in that time? Um, honestly, it was most of the conversation was about the new headset rule. Um, I think that's pretty exciting for all of us. Um, you know, I had... Josh McCown has been in the league or was in the league for I don't know how many years. Um, and so it's kind of cool to, to talk to someone who's done it before, um, has lived my dream, um, and, and kind of pick his brain about, you know, honestly just having a conversation. It was more just like getting to know him. Um, and then the last half of the conversation was like, hey, how do you deal with the, the headset thing? Um, and, and, and figuring out like kind of the ins and outs of, the, of how it works, um, what worked and what didn't work. Um, <laughs> Some some funny stories that we talked about, just about you know, maybe the headset going out, but really maybe it really didn't. But um, you know, it's it's cool. Um, so I, I think it'll be a cool thing for for me and Coach Harbo this year, um, getting to feel out how it actually works and do it in live situations, um, and, and being able to to hear what he says and, and see how that plays out for our offense. Daniel, you won't be sneaking up on anybody this year coming off an all-Big Ten season. How have you kind of embraced knowing that you're going to be the number one guy opposing defensive coordinators are going to be trying to stop through the year? Um, just never taking a day for granted. You know, nothing's guaranteed. Knowing what got me here and uh, continuing that process even at a higher level because, you know, this is my last year. So, you know, don't leave nothing on the bone. Take everything, you know, by the by the heart, really. You know, just grinding consistently and Understanding that people are going to be looking out for you, but that can't change the way you prepare. Daniel, what's the next step forward you want to take with your game as you approach the offseason and improve, improving here? Could you ask that one more time? Sorry. What, what's a specific area you want to take a step forward in as you begin the offseason here? Um, for this offseason, I'd say continually bringing the young guys ab about, like, you know, our freshman receivers, our sophomore receivers, to kind of leaving my legacy on this uh, receiver room. And – but skillfully wise, you know, just fine tuning everything, I'd say, you know, with even catching the ball, how I catch the ball, you know, catching traffic, um, even route running, polishing that up. I'd say, you know, kind of like your last year, you want to be as most polished as you can be. So that that's kind of the intake I'm taking on it. Daniel, can you uh, just say a little bit more about what you were alluding to a few minutes ago about Max and uh, quality or traits that you hadn't seen here before? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, even with like the way he, he, he commands the offense, literally. And uh, the way even in the huddle, off the, on the field, when we're already lined up, he's able to make adjustments on the fly. He's able to see things that really no one else is on the field is able to see. And uh, he's able to put us, receivers and running backs, in the best position to you know, go out there and be successful. Just his knowledge, of the, I'd say, of the game is very, very impeccable. Darius, the running back room has had a lot of turnover. How has it been connecting with the new transfers in and the new freshmen coming in as well? Uh, it's been great. Um, everybody's connected, really. Um, we hang out all the time. We're always together. Uh, we play a lot of, like, Mortal Kombat and Tekken, uh, which are, like, fighting video games. Um, talk a lot of crap to each other. Uh, most, of, most of the time we're just joking around with each other, just around each other. Um, I feel like that's a big thing for our room because – as we know, we run the ball here in Minnesota, so it's not just one guy um, taking all the load. We need to be able to depend on the next guy, third guy, fourth guy, so everybody needs to be prepared to be the starter. Um, no matter who it is, um, everybody needs to understand the situation at all times and all the things that we work on. Max, how did the uh, spring break trip to Georgia come about, and who joined you, and, and what did you guys do while you down there? 
Yeah, so I had uh, uh, previously done that at UNH um, with my guys, and I had been trying to do it for like two years prior, and, and COVID kept pushing it back, and flights getting canceled, so that was always an issue. Um, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I was going home to train anyway, um, and a couple of guys are from Georgia. Um, and so we got to go back and train for a week and we had a blast. I made a little, you know, itinerary for the guys and we had a kind of a mock uh, retreat. Um, and I plan on doing that again in May uh, with, a, with a larger group. Um, so it'll, it, it was awesome. I think, again, it goes back to the point where I say people are, are, are wanting to grow and they want to get better. Um, some, you have to force some guys to want to do that stuff and take the time out of their spring break where they've been doing football for two months. And then like you, they're going to get asked to train when they want an actual break. Um, but they wanted to do that stuff, so we had a good time. It was it, it was hard work for you know four days of of training and workouts. So we had a we had a really good time. So where the guys in went? Um, the guys from Georgia uh, were Kendrick and uh, Bro uh, Lamecki Brockington, um, and then Elijah Spencer has some family in, in Georgia as well. So it ended up working out pretty well. Max, what did you learn about yourself when you battled back from injury in 2021, going through the rehab process and then getting back on the field? Yeah, I think I've I've gotten that question a lot about kind of rehab stuff, and I think it's it's very consistent throughout sport. People are con constantly getting injured and, and trying to rehab, and um, I won't say that that my story's different or the same um, as anyone else's. Um, mine was just an AC on a meniscus, um, and it puts you in a pretty low spot. I think. For most athletes, they would probably say the same thing. Um, you know, I had I had some help along the way. I, I can't say that I did it by myself. I had um, a lot of help from Seth Mikowski, um, who's he's I would I call him kind of my mindset mental coach kind of guy. He's, he uses chess to to teach to teach mental efficiency, and um, we worked a lot together um, throughout the injury process. And um, I would just say the help along the way is is really what dug me out of it. Um, and then the love for my teammates as well at UNH. Um, I, I wouldn't have been able to, to come back as fast as I did without them. So um, it's definitely a, it takes a village for sure. Max, your numbers against the Blitz were really good at UNH. Why do you think that is? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> I would say number one. I mean, up front, um, I think at one point last year we were like the lowest number of sacks in the CA at one point last year, um, which is cool. You have an O line that's willing to block for you, which is pretty fun. Um, I would say the preparation that that my staff um, and and me too we we put a lot of stuff in a lot of preparation in for for each week's opponent. Um, I'm I, I live I live and die by preparation. Um, I know that my skill only goes so far. Um, I don't run a four four. I can't escape every single blitz. But if I know what's coming, then maybe I can have a chance to get out of it. Um, and so I, I think that it comes from a team effort. Um, coming from the staff, and then also a group effort from the offensive line, the running back room, the receiver room, and me as well together as a unit. Because um, it's not just me getting out of a blitz, it's also my receivers be able to catch the ball within pressure, be able to catch it in, in man coverage when I have to take a shot. It's my O-line picking up twist game. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. For each of you, what are you most looking forward to with the spring session starting with this group? Probably start with Daniel. Um, Really just gathering that uh, chemistry, just continuing that chemistry. Just kind of the first time we can get, you know, live football-like uh, experience. So really just building that chemistry as this, because every team is a new team. So with this team, building that new chemistry, I'd say. I'd like to say um, our team putting everything together, um, putting all the pieces together. We've had throwing sessions and and blocking periods and things like that. But I feel like putting everything together will be fun to see. Um, and that's pretty exciting to see all the guys coming together. Yeah, I would agree with both those statements. Um, I think the you have the bits and pieces right now that are kind of starting to blend. Um, and then when you get in the spring ball, it's like, all right, let's see if we can actually do it on the fly. Um, I'm very excited to see you know the competition piece for the, without the team. Um, I, I think the that's the best again one of the best things about football is, is the is the competition and the competitive nature of the sport um and and seeing you know you know a one-on-one -on -one matchup between an o-line and a d-lineman or a one-on-one -on -one matchup between a corner and a receiver like feeling that energy and feeling how tangible that is um is really exciting um that's what makes practice fun and football fun in general um and, and yeah i think the just being able to see the feel the energy during practice is what i'm very excited for 
There is. Can you speak to how you think you've grown as a person, like from day one of preseason last year to now coming into this new season, and just the love from the fans off the field and the NIL opportunities you've had? <laughs> um, I like to say, like to all the fans and things like that. Um, I appreciate everybody. It's it's really fun. It's a it's a real experience. Um, like having all the people that are actual fans and like seeing people out in public and they know who I am. That's a that's honestly a blessing. It's really cool to see and like cool to be a part of. Um, when it comes to NIL, I mean I appreciate all the donors to the team and things like that. Um, I mean it's been great. Uh, my team's our whole entire team has been affected by it. Um, it's a good thing. I feel like it's a great thing that's been added to college football. Um, and then some that I've grown from in myself is trying to be a better leader. Um, coming in, I was kind of the youngest guy in the room, so I didn't have much of a voice. I should have had more of a voice, um, but I, I wasn't training myself to be like that. And now this off season, I've tried to be, I've been being a better leader, and uh, trying to bring the younger guys up, and even the transfer guys that have come in. They're not younger, but I've been helping them along the way and helping them with their process of transitioning to our team. Darius, if you're going to get 200 plus touches this fall, is the number one thing you got to continue to learn from those older guys in the room about taking care of your body? Or what do you think, if you're going to get to those 200 plus touches, what has to happen? Um, the body, the body, the body is definitely the most important thing. Um, the guys in the room are helping me with that. And it's not just me that's taking care of the body. Um, pretty much everybody is. Everybody saw what I went through last year. So everybody understands like what it's going to take to keep your body up. Like I said, everybody's preparing to be the starting back. Um, so everybody's holding themselves to that standard. So keeping their body in order, um, hydrating, eat, sleeping, um, like maintenance plans. So everybody's working on that. Let's say one or two more go Ahmad in the back. Max, uh, obviously you're stepping up a level, coming to a bigger university, coming in as the quarterback one. There's a lot more pressure, a lot more scrutiny, and a lot more naysayers. What's your message to some of those doubters about you maybe not belonging here? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, I think number one, the first part of the the, the question really is is playing quarterbacks playing quarterback. I think if someone can play quarterback at a high level anywhere, they can play just the same way at a different school. Um, you know, I think it's obviously the work the work ethic, the preparation piece that allows someone to be successful at a bigger university. Um, you know, I, I think it's one of the things I'll learn this year at Minnesota um, is, that, is that difference in scale. Um, and I'm super excited for that challenge and, and, and that difference because um, I think this will be, Minnesota will be a really good um, test for me as a, as a player, as a leader, as a quarterback um, to be put in that, that atmosphere and see how I can handle it. And that's what excites me. Um, I, I think the excitement piece is, is what's going to allow me to um, you know, block out the rest of the noise. Um, and it's going to be able to strengthen my shell. I think having my team around me to be able to, to kind of explain to me how it actually works here um, and be able to bounce ideas off of them because they've experienced it and I haven't for the most part. Um, so I, it's, it's exciting. I think it, it, it creates a tighter team. Um, it creates better chemistry and um, it ultimately leads to more success. Anticipation is something I've noticed while studying your games. How have you developed and grown in that area over the years? Yeah, I've never, I've never had the strongest arm. Um, I've always trained with quarterbacks who have had way stronger arms than I have, and I've always felt behind um, just because they've been able to throw the ball farther and harder than me. Um, and the thing that I had to improve at a younger age was to be able to throw to tight windows before they were there. Um, and that number one comes from just growing up, learning how to do that, but also with two more things is preparation, knowing, knowing where and when the holes will be in the defense. And then number three is, is honestly the preparation with the receivers because I can't throw the ball to a spot if the receiver's not going to be there and, and vice versa. So that without training with the guys for hours and hours and hours on end, there's no way that it can happen anyway. Um, and again, that goes back to the, the desire to, to, to get better and grow. Um, we're, we're growing as a unit, the receivers, the running backs, and, and the, the O-line and the tight ends, like we're growing as a unit. Um, and if we're not all on the same page aligned at the same time, then there's not going to be any anticipatory throws or there's not going to be a success in general. Um, that's, that's the really exciting part. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.